Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the long-awaited CPU benchmark comparison video for Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. The game is an MMO, which means that you don't really need too much graphical horsepower. I think the main concern with the graphical update was that some people that were playing on really old hardware might not be able to play the game that well anymore or not have as good of an experience with the previous iterations of the game. So... The reality is because it's an MMO, it is actually very CPU limited. So your GPU, as long as you have, you know, a three-year-old GPU or better, you're pretty much set in terms of the graphics capability. Now the concern is actually going to boil down to is your CPU capable of keeping up with a newer GPU and also feeding the GPU fast enough with all these changes to the game. For the, you guys can see all the motherboards that I had to use to test this because CPU benchmarking is way more time consuming than GPU benchmarking. So this sort of video takes a long time to make. So if you guys like this content, if you like the video and what we cover on the channel, anything PC DIY, please subscribe to the channel. It does help me out. On the left we have the Intel motherboards all the way back to the Z87. So the Z87 is paired up with the Haswell generation. So we have a i7 4770K. This is the oldest CPU that I tested. This is also a DDR3 based CPU. So if you're still on a DDR3 PC, the results that you see from this combination is going to be most relevant to you. And then I have some DDR4 platforms. So I've got Z590 with the 11th gen Rocket Lake. So those results will be also similar for those that have a 10th gen CPU. And then we have Z690, but I have Z690 DDR4. So this is going to be a DDR4 motherboard paired up with a 12th gen i7, the 12700K, so you're going to see that. And then we also have the DDR5, the modern Intel platform with DDR5, so that's a Z790 with the 13th and 14th gen CPU. So that's going to be the i9 13900K. And then over here on the right side, we have the AMD boards. So, you know, I tested as far back as X370 paired up with a Zen 2. So I got Zen 2 there in the middle, the 3800X. And then we have Zen 3, that's the 5800X, the non-X3D, I might add, which this CPU was very surprising. That's why I kind of put it up here at the top. This CPU was tested with an X570 chipset. Now, X570 actually works with Zen 2, so you could actually be somebody who is on a Ryzen 3000 series, for example, with an X570 board. So that gives you PCI Gen 4, so you should get a little bit better performance. And then finally, we have our flagship X670 platform here. X670E pairs up with the AM5, so that's going to be your three CPUs here on the right. So we've got a Ryzen uh, 9, another Ryzen 9. One of them has X3D, the other one doesn't. And then we have a everybody's favorite gaming CPU, the 7800X3D. So without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks.
if you're on a relatively modern platform from say 2020 or newer you're pretty much set to play the game at launch without any problems provided you're playing at an appropriate resolution what it shows is that if you're playing at 4k you don't really have to worry too much about the CPU unless your CPU is really really old like the i7 4770k from 2013 so it's literally almost 11 years old it'll be 11 years old next month so that gives you guys an idea even at 4k we're running into a CPU bottleneck with this ancient DDR3 platform so if you're on DDR3 you're probably in the best position to upgrade however there are new CPUs coming out this summer so if you're willing to wait until around July August maybe September at the latest you're going to probably see a massive massive upgrade however the results that we saw you know I gotta point out the X3D CPUs because the X3D CPUs are the best CPUs for MMOs anyone who plays Star Citizen knows this to be true the X3Ds are basically uncontested you, then the cool thing about them is you don't have to do anything you literally just buy them build the PC and you turn on Expo or XMP and that's basically it they run out of the box what you guys see on the screen that's it really really well optimized for CPU bound games can't emphasize that enough so if you're in the market and you want to buy now the X3D CPUs are the way to go if you just want a gaming CPU that Ryzen 7 will take care of you if you want like an all-rounder stream station all-in-one the 7950 X3D I mean that's what I personally am using so I can speak from first-hand experience there and then for the middle of the road here, you know, you have obviously you have Intel, Intel i9s. They're good. They tend to use a little bit more power, especially in CPU demanding scenarios like in places like Limza Lomenza. You'll see that your power consumption like spikes pretty high with the CPU with this i9 13900K or 14900K. They're basically the same thing. So I don't really recommend that CPU. And then obviously the older Intels, these the 12th and 11th gen are still pretty good. I wouldn't tell anybody to upgrade if they're on one of these or if they're on even like the Zen 3, like the 5800X. I have to call that one out because the 5800X was amazing. I don't know what it is. I know that there's a lot of uh, people in the Final Fantasy 14 community, like content creators that actually use the 5800X. You know, like, uh, just shout out to Mr. Happy, because Mr. Happy has a 5800X, and this thing has insanely good performance in Final Fantasy XIV, so I don't know if there's some kind of developers optimized specifically for certain platforms. I have no idea. I'm just saying that that CPU, the 5800X, not even the X3D, the X3D would probably do even better, but the regular 5800X from 2020 is an amazing CPU for this one game. So the good news is most modern platforms from four or five years ago will be fine, despite all the changes. But if you want the best experience, and if you're on a super, super old platform, and you're looking to upgrade, I would recommend the X3Ds. The X3Ds are pretty much plug and play, and they're, the system's really quiet. You don't need liquid cooling. You literally just put a regular air cooler on them, and it's fine. So I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments if you're in the market to upgrade. If you have any questions, we do a live stream every Thursday evenings, North America time. So if you want to tune in and ask your questions while I'm live, feel free to do that. If you like this video, please leave a like. It does help me out. And if you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.